can bring the greatest sport from the greatest state into focus. Lone Star Gridiron. All right, welcome out to another exciting edition of the Lone Star Gridiron videocast. We are at day two here in College Station of the FSN Southwest 7-on-7 seven seven State Championships. The last show, we completed all the way to the championships for the small schools. Today is going to be all about the big schools. After this break, we're going to send it out to Eric Weedy, who's going to break down all the action leading up to the championship. Treat your family to Van Gogh, packed with live and active culture to boost kids' math and reading skills. It's sure to satisfy your hunger for inspiration. Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. Helmet Graphics brought to you by Texas High School Helmet Project. Welcome back to the video cast. The 2008 Fox Sports Southwest 7-on-7 seven -seven tournament was filled with great talent and some great competition. We'll take you right to the highlights. Let's go! This tournament was filled with big upsets. The first one came during pool play. Pool K featured powerhouses AM Consolidated and Abilene Cooper. One, two, three, three, five. But Fort Ben Elkins went two and one along with South Garland, and they were on their way to the championship bracket. We got a really good defense. Our safeties, our safeties, they really they really help out. But our offense, our offense, you know, spent a lot of hours out on the field, you know, extra catching, uh, drills, working out. South Garland took the Dave Campo-led Koppel Cowboys to overtime in the first round, but the Cowboys outlasted the Colonels, winning 35 to 27. One of the big matchups in the second round had defending champions Georgetown facing off against Lone Star Gridiron favorite Arlington Lamar. The Vikings offense was explosive. And their defense was suffocating. Arlington Lamar advanced 34 to 7. We've been looking forward to this uh, tournament all year. We've been preparing for it, getting ready, and working for a long time. This is a big tournament for us. It's the biggest tournament in the state. Plano's offense was also hitting on all cylinders when they played Sulphur Springs in the second round. Sulphur Springs scored 51 points, but the Plano D came through in the clutch. Plano stayed undefeated, 70 to 51. That was our goal coming out here is to win our pool and then, of course, win out because you got to do that to get to the championship. So that's what we're trying to do, keep, keep the losses at a zero. But most of the other undefeateds didn't fare that well. Seven of the nine teams that were undefeated coming out of pool play were out after the second round. In the quarterfinals, the other undefeated team, Richland, faced off against Stephenville. Come on, guys! Wide receiver Philip Gonzalez led the Rebels past the Yellow Jackets 40 to 34. They're really good, and we played them twice already, and we beat them both but times, but it's been hard. Arlington Lamar's David Calton came up big in the quarterfinals against Tyler Lee. The Vikings win was a close one against the Raiders, 30 to 27. And fans got a glimpse at UT's future QB when Lake Travis faced Mesquite. Mesquite held a slim six-point lead late in the game. But then Garrett Gilbert and the Cavs tried to pull off the last second win. That's it, that's it, that's it. But time ran out and Mesquite moved on 42 to 36. Let's go! We don't worry about the hype, we don't worry about what everything is going on because people doubted us, they voted us not to even make it out of our pool play. And we just gonna keep working and keep grinding. And in the last of the quarterfinal matchups, Colleyville Heritage knocked off Plano 39 to 26. That win pitted the Panthers against Richland in the semifinal. Three, one, two, three, family! Richland jumped out quickly on their first drive when Tyler Cotton hit Philip Gonzalez for six. And on the next play, Casey Savage scores a pick six for Richland, and the route is on. The Rebels win 42 to 24. We need to get out here and we do what we've been doing since we was in the eighth grade. Arlington Lamar no, who they want? Who they want? took on Mesquite in the other semifinal matchup. 
These teams match touchdown. For a spectacular touchdown. And in the end, it took OT to decide this one. The Skeeters scored on their first play with this quick strike to Darnell Taylor. And the Vikings answered back with a touchdown of their own to Jake Bennett. And then they decided to go for the win. Mesquite's Darnell Taylor comes up big again with the interception and the one point win. And with that, our championship final for this year's Fox Sports Southwest 7-on-7 seven seven State Tournament is set. Mesquite versus Richland. And we'll have all those highlights coming up next. Gridiron Warriors, take the field in an epic battle that is larger than life. It is called... Texas High School Football. Only one show can bring the greatest sport from the greatest state into focus. Lone Star Gridiron. Welcome back from high above Kyle Field here in College Station, Texas. We're going to send you out to Eric Weedy for complete coverage of the championship game. But before that, we're going to take a stop off with Mike Wright for the all-tournament team. Hey, all you high school football fans. This is Mighty Mike Wright here. I'm going to give you the all-tournament team, Lone Star style, here for the Division I teams. For Arlington Lamar, we have wide receiver Travis Smith. <laughs> We also have wide receiver David Aker, and then defensive back wide receiver Jake Bennett. For Colleyville Heritage, we have quarterback Stephen Hill. Lake Travis, quarterback Garrett Gilbert. For Plano, we had quarterback Carson Meager, running back Rex Burkhead. For Richland, we have wide receiver Philip Gonzalez. For Mesquite, we have defensive back wide receiver Marcus Trice and Darnell Trailer. So that's your all tournament team for Division I Lone Star style. For Lone Star Gridiron, this is Mighty Mike Wright. So back to you, Eric, for highlights of the championship game. All right, thanks, Mike. Now it's time for the action. Richland Rebels versus Mesquite Skeeters. We'll take you right to the game. Mesquite jumped out quickly in the first half with touchdown passes to Darian McNeely and Marcus Trice. The Skeeters' Darnell Taylor says their success is a result of hard work. We've been working hard all summer, and I feel like that we are ready to win this. Richland played the championship game without star wideout Philip Gonzalez. Philip Anderson and Anton Authors came up big for the Rebels. We have really good receivers. We got Philip Anderson, Anton Authors. We have Justin Erickson. We have Nico. We have Jordan. We have we're solid right now, and our defense is picking everything up. So we're doing a good job. Well, it was all our defense this whole day. Our defense came out strong in the second half. Shut them down. That's all we needed was a few stops, and we got going. Richland outscored Mesquite 21 to six in the second half to take home the state championship. the best thing that ever happened in my life. Nothing, nothing greater. I mean, we didn't expect to come this far. Everybody had us underrated. We just came in, felt like we a team, we family. Everybody played together. We all went it together as a team. We got that fight! We got that fight! We got that fight! We ain't no! We ain't no! Richland completes an undefeated run to the state championship, but both teams are going to Georgia to represent Texas in the national tournament. One, two, three, four. All right, Richland takes home the state championship for Division I. That's it for us here at LoneStarGridiron.com. And until next time, we'll see you at the game. Yeah.